Today's video is going to be different from my usual stuff, but today I want to introduce you guys to what I think is the best defensive line in college football history and how that 2018 Clemson team made NFL draft history. But first, if you are new to the channel, I make videos about everything related to college football, so please be sure to subscribe to the channel and help me reach 7,000 subscribers by the end of August. If you are a football fan, then why not take a moment and do that? I know you won't regret it. If you have a cool idea like this you think I should do next, then let me know down in the comment section and be sure to turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload. Now let's get started with the scariest defensive line in the history of college football. To understand just how crazy this unit was, we have to think about how hard it is to produce first round talent on the D line. I don't really have facts to back this up, but typically every few years a power five school will produce a single big time defensive line prospect. I think about guys like Bradley Chubb at NC State, Ed Oliver at Houston, Bud Dupree at Kentucky, and Vita Vea from Washington. It's hard enough to produce one big time player like that, let alone four in the same draft. Even for schools that constantly recruit and pump out talent, it's hard to put more than one guy in one position group in the first round. I think I've beaten this point to the ground at this point, but I want you guys to understand just how crazy what happened was. So now let's meet the players that people like to refer to as the Clemson Power Rangers. All four kids would end up getting drafted in the top four rounds, and three of them went in the first round. The first one was Cleland Farrell, who went to the Oakland Raiders with the fourth overall pick. Cleland was a four-star recruit coming out of high school, but he was never supposed to become the monster he would become. He would go on to lead the ACC in both sacks his junior and senior year, and finished with 27 sacks in his Tigers career. As a rookie, Cleland was disappointing, but he did show potential at times as he collected 4.5 sacks and 38 tackles. He is expected to make a jump in 2020, and I think he could be a really good player soon, and he's got to live up to that 4th overall draft status. The second guy was Christian Wilkins. He was taken with a 13th overall pick by the Miami Dolphins, and those two alone would have made a crazy defensive line to begin with. Compared to Farrell, Wilkins was always supposed to be a big time player, as he was a 5 star recruit and one of the top players in his class. As an interior lineman, he wasn't supposed to have amazing sack totals, but he'd go on to combine for 16 in his Clemson career, and he was an absolute monster. As a rookie with the Dolphins, he would show his potential with 56 tackles and 2 sacks, plus he actually got the chance to catch a touchdown later on in the season. So not only did they have two guys taken in the first round, but we can't forget the third guy in Dexter Lawrence. Lawrence is one of the best players to ever come out of the state of North Carolina as he was a 5 star recruit and a top 5 player in his class. He broke the freshman record for sacks at Clemson, but he didn't continue to dominate the way many thought he would. He tested positive for a banned substance and had to sit out the 2018 college football playoff, but he was still a top tier NFL draft prospect after he collected 18 tackles for loss and 10 sacks during his 3 year career. He would go on to go with the 17th overall pick in the first round to the New York Giants, and he had a pretty decent rookie year as he went for 2.5 sacks and 38 tackles. So already those three would have been a complete monster and that kind of would have been NFL draft history right there, but we can't forget about one more guy who was on the defensive line who people fail to mention or talk about a whole lot, and that is Austin Bryant. He was a lower ranked 4 star recruit coming out of high school, and he didn't have as much hype around him as the other guys. He started his junior and senior year, and would end up being the final piece to their unbelievable unit. He did struggle with injury at times during his Clemson career, and he just wasn't as good as the other three but he was still a very, very talented kid as he was drafted with the 117th overall pick in the fourth round by the Detroit Lions. He played very sparingly as a rookie as he only collected eight tackles in his first year in the league, but to be fair, he battled injury issues. All four of these kids were starting on the same defensive line and I can't even imagine what it was like to be on the offensive line for the opposing team. It's not like you have to worry about one guy, you have to worry about four of them. Plus they had two of the top kids in the 2018 recruiting class as their backups. It's just mind boggling all of them played at the same time, and it's just truly crazy how dominant they were. Clemson has already worked on replacing all those guys, and they're an up and coming program when it comes to turning out NFL defensive line talent. I honestly don't know why I decided to make today's video, and I really could have added more stats and I think gone more in depth on this, but I was running low on time, and this idea kind of just popped into my head. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and if you did, please be sure to smash that like button and let me know what you think down in the comment section. If you have any sort of cool idea or something you would like me to do, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below as I really do take every comment and suggestion seriously. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and help me reach 7,000 subs by the end of August. If you're still here and you're a Clemson fan, check out my video about the rise of Trevor Lawrence and all my other college football videos. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and until next time, peace.